Hey everybody, I'm Max Scoville, and on today's fix, somebody finally found the solution to one of Breath of the Wild's most elusive puzzles. Ghost of Tsushima is getting a director's cut for PS4 and PS5, and if you want more PlayStation exclusives on PC, Sony's latest acquisition might give you some hope. Also, it's Bidoof Day, so let's Bidoof it up in honor of Bidoof. Bidoof is the name of a Pokemon. Just cut away from me, please. The community around The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has done some incredible things within that massive sandbox, like speedrunning the whole game in under 20 minutes, defeating Calamity Ganon with just a regular stick, and doing just all sorts of bonkers, wacky, game-breaking stunts by getting weird with physics and their Sheikah Slates. But there's one impossible chest that nobody has been able to open, until now. For context, the chest appears deep underwater once you're within 60 meters of it, but it'll immediately begin sinking and will disappear after 7 seconds. But a YouTuber named Cleric cracked the case. First, Cleric glitched through the world, landing 60 meters below the chest itself, underneath the actual map, landing on a Cryonis platform to avoid sinking into the void, launching Link into the air, then spamming the chest with arrows and bombs while it was frozen to launch it back into the world, all the while, Link was falling and wolfing down Paella to keep his stamina up. Eventually, Cleric landed the chest and Link on another Cryonis block and opened it up to find... ...a single piece of amber. Just a super regular in-game material. If you want to see the full clip, head over to Cleric's YouTube channel so you can pause and rewind multiple times to figure out what the hell is even happening, because it happens very quickly. Now the big question is, was this chest left there accidentally, or was it a deliberate attempt to troll players? Keep in mind, this is the same game that gave you a golden turd for finding all 900 Korok seeds, so I wouldn't put it past them. Speaking of games involving swords and bombs and arrows and horseback riding and all that good stuff, Ghost of Tsushima is getting a director's cut later this year with additional content and it's getting proper releases for PS4 and PS5. The director's cut will include all additional content Sucker Punch released since launch, plus a brand new area called Iki Island featuring a whole new storyline. That's on both PS4 and PS5. However, as you might have expected, the PS5 version has some new bells and whistles like drastically improved load times, which were already pretty fast on PS4 to begin with. And of course, it's gonna have haptic feedback, adaptive trigger support, 3D audio, different 4K resolution options, and a targeted 60 frames per second. So basically the kind of stuff we should expect from first party PS5 games, since those are all the PS5's main selling points. Now here's the fun part, explaining the pricing structure. If you do not own any existing version of Ghost of Tsushima, the director's cut will be $60 US on PlayStation 4 and $70 on PlayStation 5. If you already own the PS4 base version of Ghost of Tsushima, you can upgrade to the PS4 director's cut for $20. And if you own the base version and want to upgrade to the PS5 version, it's $30. And if you already own the PS4 version of the director's cut, the upgrade to PS5 will be $10. So basically, it's either a brand new PS4 game for 60 bucks or a $20 expansion to a PS4 game you already own, but whatever version you're playing, if you want to play it on PS5, it's going to cost you $10 more. It's not that complicated, but I feel like it was easier to explain how that dude got the Zelda chest open. I'm looking forward to having to spell out the price models for God of War Father of the Year Edition and The Last of Us Part 2 PGA Masters Tour Edition. Now, if all that sounds too complicated and you'd rather just play first-party Sony games when they eventually come to PC two years later, you might be in luck. Head of PlayStation Studios Herman Holst announced on his Twitter that Sony has acquired yet another studio, and this one has a history of making the PC versions of console releases. Nixus is a Dutch studio that's been around since 1999 and has specialized in porting console titles to PC, including the recent Tomb Raider and Deus Ex games, but dating all the way back to the days of Kane and Lynch and Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver. Interestingly, as far as I can tell, Nixus has worked exclusively with studios under the Square Enix umbrella, so it's interesting that Sony scooped them up rather than Square. While it's possible we'll see Nixus developing original games, it seems more likely the team will be put to work bringing some of Sony's PlayStation exclusive titles to PC, which Sony Interactive CEO Jim Ryan said was a priority earlier this year. Earlier this week, Sony acquired Housemark, the studio behind Returnal, and to celebrate, an official account accidentally posted an image congratulating the HD remastering powerhouse Bluepoint on its acquisition. It hasn't been acquired yet, but that would be cool. So regardless of what's in the future, Sony's definitely staffing up. I personally hope that they, uh, I don't know, remaster Bloodborne and put it on PC, but hey, that's just me. Now, finally, as I mentioned earlier, it's a very special day. It's Bidoof Day, celebrating that lovable Pokemon that looks like a cross between a beaver and a piece of Nestle Bunch of Crunch candy. I'm unclear why July 1st is Bidoof Day, but the Pokemon Company made the announcement, and there are celebrations underway in Pokemon Go, Pokemon Masters, and the Pokemon trading card game online, as well as new merch, a very special Bidoof episode of the Pokemon anime, and a Bidoof surprise on Twitch, which I don't like the sound of one bit. 
As always, be sure to like and subscribe to IGN on your platform of choice, and if you're looking for another video featuring my dumb face and pointy hair, check out the latest episode of Reviews in Review. It's a show where I give you a roundup of all the games IGN reviewed in the last month, and June had a bunch of great games. Now with that, I bid you all a big, blessed, and beautiful Bidoof day. Go forth and Bidoof excellent to each other. Bidoof you later, everybody. It's never gonna stop Bidoof, sharing what it's got Bidoof. Bidoof's gonna show you how.